We're going to use Python to solve multiple equations and multiple variables. We're going to use the scipy fsolve function to do this. We have a slightly more complicated example for problem number four of homework three. If you'd like to follow along on this, just come to the course website, uh, CHE 263, and then come down to schedule, and you can follow along with uh, homework three. It will open up a Google Colab or you can get to the GitHub repository and just open up this homework 3 IPython notebook. This is problem number four where we have two uh, liquids that we're mixing together, benzene and toluene, together in an initially empty container. And then these come to equilibrium and we want to be able to predict what is the concentration in the vapor and also in the liquid. And we'll use Raoult's law which um, will be these two equations right here. A very simplified version of vapor liquid equilibrium. And then we'll also use a um, Antoine equation to get our uh, vapor pressures. Okay, we have uh, these two species. We've got a lot of equations here. There's a lot of things going on. So the very first thing you need to do is just kind of write out your equations. What are your variables? What are you trying to solve for? And uh, we get, have given, been given some constants here that are for the Antoine equation. And a little bit more information here that we know y1 is going to be equal to 0 0.33. Okay, y1 is uh, 0 0.33. And then we have, we know that those must sum up to 1. So therefore, it's going to be 1 minus 0 0.33, and that is 0 0.67. Okay, so benzene is going to be 1, and then toluene is going to be 2. So there's more toluene in the vapor than the benzene. Okay, we are also at a pressure of 120 kilopascals. Um, so we need to find x1 and t, and uh, we also need to remember that x1 plus x2 equals 1. So let's uh, first of all uh, set up some functions. So I'm going to just start here by typing out some of my constants that I need. So uh, and a couple packages that I'll need as well. I'll import numpy as mp, and then also get the scipy dot optimize. Um, I'll import fsolve. So I can just import just one of those if I want. Uh, one of the packages. In that case, scipy optimize. I just want fsolve from that one. Let's come up with some of our constants. 0 0.33 and y2 is going to be 1 minus that. I also have my pressure and that's 120 kilopascals. I'll have my Antoine coefficient. Uh, uh, coefficients or constants. Uh, I'm just going to paste those in here. You can also copy those in as well. And I'll just paste those in as lists or arrays of the uh, different constants. Okay, now I want to come up with, um, you know, maybe some functions that describe my uh, vapor pressure. So I'll do PSAT1 and I'll define a new function. I'll call that PSAT1 as a function of temperature and then it will return the new pressure and that's going to be equal to this expression that I circled right in the middle on the bottom. Okay, so it's going to be the exponent of uh, AC1 0, I'm going to give it that first constant, AC1 um, 1 and then I'll divide by the temperature in degrees Celsius plus AC1, 2. Okay, so there's PSAT1. If I wanted to print that one, I could say PSAT1 as a function of temperature, let's say it's 100 degrees, then it should be able to print out. Um, let's see, did I misspell that? I did. Optimize. Okay, so there is my vapor pressure in kilopascals when I'm at 100 degrees uh, Celsius. 
Okay, let's do the same thing for PSAT 2. This is going to be my toluene vapor pressure. And I'm just going to change this to AC2. Okay, and I'll just test that as well. Okay, so there's my PSAT 2. All right, let's go ahead and do the, the next thing that we need, which is um, set up our functions as residuals to be able to solve these. So we need to get the temperature and X1 and X2, or just temperature and X1. Okay, we can do either one, depending on how we set that up. I'm just going to set it up as three equations and three variables. In this case, I'm going to have X1 that's going to be one of the unknowns, X2 that's going to be one of the unknowns, and then also my temperatures. Okay, this is not P1 sat times temperature, it's just P1 sat as a function of temperature and P2 sat as a function of temperature. Okay, and that will be in degrees uh, Celsius. So I have uh, equation number one, I'll have equation number two, and then equation number three is going to be just that uh, x1 plus x2 have got to be equal to 1. Okay, x1 plus x2. I'm going to put this in residual form, so I'm going to put minus 1 equals 0, whereas x1 plus x2 equals 1. Okay, I'll also do that uh, to these as well. Just put a negative sign right there, and then just set that equal to 0. So shift it over onto one side of the equation. So these are going to be in residual format. And then I need to come up with my function. I need to define a new function. That's going to be a function of, I'll just say Z. And then I'll unpack these. I'll say that's temperature X1 and X2 equals Z. So Z will be equal to three different values. It'll be in a list. And then when it comes into that function, it will um, unpack those and assign them to those variable names. Okay, so now I need to come up with my first function residual, and that's going to be equal to y1 times p minus x1 times p sat 1 as a function of temperature. My second one is going to be very similar. I'll put this as index 0, okay? Start with 2, 2, and 2. Okay, then my third, uh, third one is going to be x1 uh, plus x2 minus 1. And then I'll just return f0, f1, and f2. Okay, so now if I have a guess value, such as I think the solution is going to be equal to 109 and 0 0.2 and 0 0.8. Okay, then I can see that it says, um, oh, I need to do F of that. Okay, so these are my residuals. That's how much each of these equations are not equal to zero. So the third one is actually equal to zero because we put 0 0.2 and 0 0.8. But if we did something that's not does not sum up to one, then it's going to return something that's um, you know not zero. And then you can see here you can see the values of how much the uh, the Reynolds law is not satisfied as well. So we want to try to drive all of these residuals to zero. We could either guess and check. We could keep plugging in different values here, or we could use uh, the f-solve uh, function with scipy. So to do that, we're going to be uh, doing uh, z equals f-solve, and then I'll put in my uh, function name, and then I'll put in my guess values. Okay, and then I can print z. So this is the solution to those uh, to the vapor liquid equilibrium. It says that I'm at 109 degrees Celsius. Here is my uh, molar fra mole fraction in the liquid, and here's my uh, mole fraction of toluene in the liquid. So mole fraction of benzene in the liquid, mole fraction of toluene in the liquid, and then the temperature as well. So we can print these, make them just a little bit nicer. Um, 
let's just go ahead and uh, print these as formatted strings. I can say uh, F and then put this in single quotes. This is a new formatted strings. These are new in uh, Python 3.6. Okay, the temperature is, and then I could just put in Z0 and let me just do a uh, formatted string there with two decimal points. I can just leave off the zero if I want as well. Okay, and I'll go ahead and get rid of the Z value there, printing that. Okay, and then go ahead and do the other ones, the benzene mole fraction in the liquid is, and then that'll be the second one. And then we'll finish it off with the toluene. Okay, so there I have my a uh, little bit nicer printout of some of the values. So let's go back and review what we did here. Um, to set this up, we uh, put in all of our constants and things that we knew. We created these helper functions to give us our uh, saturated um, our vapor pressures. And, um, and then we set up our three equations and three unknowns. We inserted, uh, you know, the guess values, and then we needed to return the residuals of those three equations. So this is the key thing right here, and then F solve then uh, gives us the solution by saying what is the function name, and then uh, what are the guess values that you want to use to try to find a solution. Sometimes you'll see with F solve that it won't always give you a solution; it'll report an error. Or, or return back your initial guesses. Um, you know, if that happens, you might need to update the initial guesses. Sometimes you can plot the functions, see how they're changing with the initial guess values. So those are all different strategies. This is a fairly simple problem right here. It's really just two variables, two unknowns. But we added a third one just for convenience. Um, and then we, um, in, in the end, we just printed out, uh, printed out the uh, solution. So. Um, Anyway, I hope this, uh, hope this helps. This is just another example of what we can do with FSolve. And if you'd like to follow along with uh, more content, again, just come back to the course website. Um, and I'll show you just one other thing that might be helpful here down on the right. You'll see you know, ways to do this, equation solving, um, and uh, you know, some different um, ways to you know, solve equations. Uh, we reviewed linear equations, we reviewed nonlinear equations with some additional examples there as well. So I hope that helps and uh, leave any comments in the uh, comments below this uh, comments area below this video.